Hello everyone and welcome to a new Free-to-Play Ultimate Iron Man progress video. A little bit less of a wait for this one than for previous ones, which hopefully you guys enjoy. So we last left off, I was killing hill giants and uh, killing Obor whenever I got the keys, training melees, and hoping to get the Rune Kite Shield from Obor since that's the only way I can get it in Free-to-Play Iron Man other than smithing, uh, and I would require quite a high smithing level uh, to get the Rune Kite Shield, so... I decided to try and kill Obor for it, and Hill Giants are pretty good training for the combat stats that I've been that I was at, which was like 40s and 50s. So I can show a log of all the different drops that I got for Obor. Um, I got quite a few runes. I feel like, I don't know if I was unlucky really, but I got a lot of uh, Chaos and Death rune drops, which are better than Cosmic runes anyways, because those are basically entirely useless. But they're probably the second worst drops behind Cosmic runes uh, because they're just a bit of magic XP. They're not like GP or Laws or Nature runes or like, you know, rune kite shields. But I did get a decent amount of alkaloids and stuff like that, and straight up coin drops, which are pretty nice. I think I netted maybe like 300 to 350k rate, uh, straight GP from from the Obor kills that I did, which is pretty decent for free to play Iron Man. I think I ended up doing Hill Giants for maybe four days, four or five days, something like that. Um, and on kill count 23, I did manage to get the Rune Kite Shield, which I don't really know what the drop rate of it is, but I'm happy with that. It doesn't seem too bad at all. And I still had three leftover keys since I was just using up the keys after I finished a trip of Hill Giants, so I actually got my kill count up to 26 after that and got a couple more alkable items, which is pretty nice. Um, so the other main item that I needed after getting the Kite Shield to have all of my gear sorted out is a Rune Full Helm, since I don't have the smithing level to make one, and the only other way to get them is either Obor or Greater Demons, which can only be found in Deep Wilderness for free-to-play. So since I had the Kite Shield and I was getting kind of tired of Hill Giants due to how crowded they are and everything, I decided to go ahead and try to do some Greater Demons in the Wildy and see if I could get my hands on a Runefall Helm a bit quicker than Obor. So I first went up to Greater Demons with uh, Fire Strikes, since that's what I'd seen other people use there. Um, and I did a full trip there. Basically the tactic for Ultimates is just kill yourself and then go up there with only the items that you need and go back after like 50 minutes or whatever to pick up your stuff and then restart. So that way you won't be risking all your items in Deep Wildy, and just you'll just be risking some casts and not too much. So I did a full trip there. I went up there with a friend of mine who have, I've been talking to at the Hill Giants, and we decided to give it a try. He was meleeing them in like the center of the ruins where you can leave on your prayers and have like infinite prayer there. Um, I decided to go out to the far east area, um, which is out of sight of the ruins completely, and just safe spot one there. Uh, and just use one spawn because that way like a lot of the PKers up there will just be hanging out at the ruins expecting people to be there and the fact that you're completely out of sight of the ruins makes you a lot less likely to get PK'd. Um, so that seemed to work pretty well. I did a full trip there. I didn't get any uh, rune full home or anything but a couple of uh, like a few thousand coins and stuff and I realized you know I have 99 range it would probably be a better idea to just range them since fire strike is pretty terrible DPS. So I decided to grab some arrows and just a short bow and not any like range armor or anything and I went up back up with range. I did finish off the cast that I had bought but after that switched to range and ranging them was way faster than maging them. Um, so if you have high range and you're thinking of doing this definitely use range over magic because fire strike is just awful DPS. And on my second trip after not very long at all I managed to get the rune full helm. I definitely got it way under drop rate. I probably only killed like 50 uh, greater demons and it's 1 in 128 so it easily could have taken like five hours or longer probably but it ended up only taking me like an hour and a half maybe two hours so I was pretty happy about that and having gotten the rune full helm that means that I do actually have max gear for free to play ultimate iron man now so this means I don't need to kill any more obor and means I don't need to kill any more hill giants which I was really happy about because while hill giants are nice for prayer xp they're not nice for anything else they're just very crowded you end up wasting so much time just sitting there waiting for them to respawn and you constantly are getting crashed and stuff like that so it was getting a little bit old and I was very much looking forward to moving on to moss giants which have a lot higher hit points they're uh, quite a bit less crowded and uh they just hit, you know, a bit higher damage, so you have to have a bit better stats for them and better food. Um, so the next thing I wanted to try to do is get my fishing and cooking levels up so that I could catch lobsters a bit faster, and I specifically was aiming for 74 cooking so that I could uh, never burn lobsters, because that's the level at which you stop burning lobsters. So I figured that was a pretty good level to go for and should be sufficient. So I decided to use a fishing and cooking method that I've been looking forward to trying for a while, ever since I saw a short clip of it by Errory. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, but he is uh, the rank 1 free-to-play hardcore Iron Man, and he's 
uh, been putting in quite a few hours and quickly climbing in the free-to-play Ironman ranking, so shout out to him. And uh, I thought this method was really cool and wanted to try it. It's basically uh, combining, uh, like, your three ticking by eating the fish and you're cooking them within the same cycle so that it's basically cooking in zero extra time other than the time it takes to uh, relight the fires and the time it takes when you, you know, have to cook the fish when you don't have any fish to eat since you don't always catch a fish, especially when you're lower fishing. Um, and obviously you lose some time to mistakes too, because it is a fairly difficult and click intensive training method, but I found it really, really enjoyable. It was just, uh, a nice throwback to the, you know, three tick skilling that I've done in the past. And it's been a while since I've done any, uh, significant three tick skilling. So I enjoyed this a lot. I think it took me maybe like two or three days to get to 74 cooking. Um, so it wasn't too bad. I think I was at like 50 something when I started, but I was getting far over the like expected EHP rates for free to play ultimate since or free to play Ironman in general since not really that many people have done this method of the people who have done 99 fishing and cooking in free to play Ironman and if you're not doing it like this method is literally like twice as fast as if you were to catch the fish and then cook them separately and I found that it wasn't too difficult to do Brimhaven agility on my main account while doing this I was just AFKing dispensers like a noob but I was still getting like 50 to 55k an hour agility xp i think it was while uh doing like high apm three tick fishing on this account so i wasn't losing too much xp in my main while doing this which was always nice also so there is the 74 cooking uh, i think i went through maybe like 11 or 12 thousand feathers uh, in total so it wasn't too costly on the gp and now I have everything that I need to move on to Moss Giants. I've heard that it's better to wait until like 60 melees or so before you start Moss Giants, but I just wanted to say fuck it and go for it um, because I was really tired of Hill Giants and I figured it, I would just train my defense first and I would get that up really quickly anyways, so it probably wouldn't be a huge problem. So this is now fast forward about a week and a half, I think. I, I finished the fishing on a Friday and it's now a Wednesday, so it's been almost two weeks that I've been at the Moss Giants. It's definitely my new home here on Crandor, nice and isolated from the rest of the world, and it's a pretty nice spot. Uh, it's far less crowded than Hill Giants, though it can still get kind of crowded, but there's very few times so far where I haven't been able to find a single open world, um, and even if I can't, having two people in a world isn't terrible, it's just less than ideal, but it's not nearly as bad as with Hill Giants, where uh, you are usually restricted to a spot with only two spawns as opposed to three, and they have half as much hit points, and you often couldn't even get two spawns to yourself. So yeah, I've just been working on the melees, onwards and upwards. Uh, I started here, I think it was like 43 defense, 54 attack, and 66 strength. And since then, I trained my defense and attack both up to 60, um, and then I trained more strength. I went from, I did strength straight from 66 up to 82. Um, and then I have just recently rounded up my defense and attack up to 70 and now I'm back to strength. Uh, I've been training my strength to just levels based on when I get a new max hit. Uh, and it, it, like I get a new max hit with aggressive and then a few levels later I get a new max hit with the accurate and defensive styles. So I would only ever switch to accurate or defensive as soon as I've gotten a new max hit for them, which was at 66 and then was at 82. Um, I think at 66 I was hitting 15s, and then I went up to 74, I think it was, so it was when I was hitting, I would have been hitting 16s with an accurate defensive, but I calculated that it would have been better for me to just keep going until 82 uh, before going back to attack or defense, so that's what I did. Um, and now I've gotten those up to 70, and I'm going to do strength until 87, which is when I get another max up to 18 with accurate and defensive. Once I hit 87 strength, I'm going to switch back to attack and defense, and I think I'll get both of those up to 85, and then I'll go straight from 87 to 98 strength. The reason I'm going to stop strength at 98 is because I don't get any new max hit at 99, so there's no difference for, at least for the specific gear and bonuses that I have between 98 and 99 strength, so strength I plan to leave at 98 until like the very end and that will be my last melee 99. So once I get strength to 98 I'll probably do, I, I've been prioritizing defense over attack actually because I think that for these the way I'm doing them without prayer flicking or anything uh, it's more efficient for me to, or it's like slightly more beneficial to gain a defense level than it is to gain an attack level so 
I've just been doing defense and attack five levels at a time each and doing defense the first, like the five defense levels first and then the five attack levels. I can't promise that the way that I've been ordering my levels is 100% efficient, but it's definitely far better to train your strength a lot higher than your attack and defense because whenever you get a new max hit it increases your XP by a pretty good amount whereas uh, you know increasing your attack level just gives you a slight bit more accuracy and when you're fighting monsters where you're already quite accurate it makes a very small difference. I think with 60 attack I'm like 80% accurate versus Moss Giants with this gear and with 99 attack I'm like 90% accurate so it's just you know only a 10% difference or a 10% increase from 60 to 99 attack which is like a huge amount of XP. And as far as other levels they've been slowly creeping up like I've gotten a cooking level just from the fishing the lobsters and stuff between trips. I've gotten a magic level or two from using up the casts of crumble and dead that I get each trip. And uh, I've gotten quite a few prayer levels. I'm up to 61 prayer now, and I think by the time I get max melees, I'll be like 82 prayer from the big bones here, which is pretty nice. Right now, my trips with a full inventory of lobsters last for like two to three hours, which is pretty decent. And I think once I have higher defense, they might last as long as like five to six hours, which will be awesome. Um, and my my like reset route between trips takes me like 15 or 20 minutes. But what I do is I teleport to clan wars to recharge my stats and then i teleport to lumbridge just using both of the free teleports and in lumbridge i go to the general store grab a chisel and cut any of the gems and then grab a hammer and a tinderbox and then i head over to the draenor sewers and i uh, use the anvil down there with all the steel bars that i pick up and all of that passive smithing xp throughout ma uh, max melees is going to be pretty nice i think it's going to be like 200k smithing xp which is quite a bit of time saved um so it's definitely worth collecting those steel bars for me. And then, and I make myself a steel axe on that since I need to chop some logs to make fire to cook my food on. So I make a steel axe and then the rest I just make plate bodies or whatever and drop it. And then conveniently in the Draenor sewers there are zombies and skeletons and I get all of the runes that I need for crumble undead casts from the moss giants. So I just use those up there. The reason I don't hold on to them all the time is just because I want to have more inventory space for food. So I figure I may as well just use them up and get rid of them. Sometimes I have to waste some of the runes because I don't always get enough elemental runes, um, but that's fine. It's not really that big of a deal. I just figure I may as well use them up instead of not picking them up at all. And then after that, I go and chop some willow logs and then grab a lobster pot from the store in Port Serum. And I head over to Karamja, fish some lobsters and light a fire and cook the lobsters. And then I head back. So. It's a fairly involved uh, trip in between, but it's a nice little break and it's kind of fun. Um, and I'm getting lots of passive bits of XP and all sorts of different skills over time. Probably by the time I'm max melees, I'll have like 80 magic or so, maybe like 80 cooking and some fishing levels. Maybe I'll get like a crafting level from cutting gems. I'll get a whole bunch of prayer levels. I won't get any smithing levels, but I will get a decent bit into the next level. And I might even possibly get a woodcutting level from all those willow logs, we'll just have to see. In terms of XP rates, I think I'm probably at this point getting somewhere around like 30 to 35k XP per hour. According to the DPS calcs I've used, my max rate right now would be like 40k XP per hour, assuming I'm not prayer, using prayer potions or anything, um, but I'm usually playing my main- I'm, I'm normally doing lavas, but right now I'm not, just so I can pay more attention to commentary. Um, so yeah, I lose a fair amount of XP, but it's kind of just a nice side project, as I said before. It's just something I do because I can, and even if my rates aren't that great, it still adds up over time. But yeah, I expect I'll be doing melees for quite a long time, probably finish max melee at the earliest in like sometime in the fall of this year, maybe like, I don't know, maybe October, possibly, but we'll just have to see. It's still quite a few hours left because my rate probably won't get too much higher than uh what it is now i mean i'll get three more max hits before i'm done uh with strength so it might go up by i don't know maybe like 5k an hour at most but yeah melees are pretty relaxed pretty fun it's nice to be working on them and collecting the natures and laws is pretty cool too um i think i'll have roughly 15k laws and 22k natures by the time i'm done with melees and all of those nature runes I'll use for superheating iron, and that'll be a nice boost of fast smithing XP. And then uh, after that, I'll be probably doing gold uh, for for the law runes. I'll be doing like mining gold at crafting guild, and then teleporting the Falador and stuff, and smelting, and then making into gold amulets. 
and that way I can train both uh, smithing and crafting at the same time, and it's pretty low cost in terms of laws, and I think I will have just about the right amount of laws to get 99 crafting and smithing after I finish melees, so that's tentatively probably what I'm going to do, just because that's practically my only option, since I will want to get rid of all of the stuff in my inventory before I move on to much, much of anything else, and I have to do something with the laws that I get and not just waste them, so... I basically could either do that or I could do magic, since magic is pretty much the only other skill I'd have left that isn't uh, inventory dependent at all. Um, so maybe I'll do magic, but I think I want to save magic for splashing curses at the boneyard while I train prayer, or at least uh, that as a potential option if I like it. Um, I wouldn't want to get 99 magic, you know, spend hundreds of hours when I could do it in practically no time uh, on the side while training prayer. So yeah, I've got the next, like, I don't know, 2,500 or 3,000 hours of gameplay sorted out between melees and then smithing and crafting, so that should keep me busy for a while, um, and I'll have another progress video, maybe when I get to 98 strength, because that will probably be the next, like, significant milestone, and that will probably take another, I don't know, month or two at least, I would say, so, um, yeah, so this is the current grind, hope you guys enjoyed the video, uh, feel free to leave any feedback in the comments section below, and drop a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys all later.